Hello my dear health seekers, Inga from Health Origins here and today I'm going to be making the best vegan lasagna. So let's begin. So we're going to start by frying the mushrooms. So I've got my um, non-stick pan preheated. Um, so this is uh, a nice big saute um, pan. I love this. Um, it's Berghoff pan. I'll link down below where you can get your own. But I love it because it really, um, it's a non-stick obviously first of all, but also it um, it has like very generous size so um, you can fit a lot of uh, volume in it um, so you can make curries from start to finish in this for example um, yes it's just a great pan so I'm just dry frying 200 grams of chestnut mushrooms um, I've just sliced them um, and we're gonna be frying them dry um, we're gonna get them to release their own um, liquid um, and hopefully we'll not need to add any water if we do I've got a cup of stock here ready so basically we need to dry fry this for about seven minutes just in size um, they've used up all their moisture so this is ready so I'm gonna take it off heat and I'm gonna add these into um, my jug here So these mushrooms are going to be the base for the red or the meaty sauce. Um, uh, optional ingredient um, is to add um, some homemade seitan. Um, I'll link down below um, how I make my seitan or in the, in the card above as well. Um, it's optional, you could add a bit more mushrooms. So instead of 200, mushroom, 200 grams of mushrooms, you could do 300 grams of mushrooms or even 400 grams of mushrooms, maybe double the mushrooms. Um, and you're not gonna need seitan, but I have some homemade seitan. So I'm gonna um, add it cubed about 250 grams here or 200 would be enough. Um, and also I'm gonna add a tin of chopped tomatoes so a tin of chopped tomatoes goes in and now for the extra flavor we're gonna be adding um, one tablespoon of miso paste so this is for um, you know to give that saltiness and the extra umami flavor so one tablespoon of red or brown miso paste here and um, about a tablespoon of soy sauce um, there's only about a tablespoon left here so I'm gonna just use it all up maybe a tablespoon and a half here so what I also need to do is I need to blitz this with my stick blender I haven't brought it here it's just got too much uh, I'm just gonna blitz it and I'm gonna show you the results so my tomato mushroom mixture is ready. Um, I've actually had to add another uh, tin of chopped tomatoes because I've added quite a bit of seitan and it was like too thick. Um, so I've added another tin, but if you're using just mushrooms or um, using just 200 grams of um, seitan, then you might not need another um, tin of tomatoes. But I actually had to add one just to make it a bit thinner and pourable. Um, so this is our kind of minced tomato um, layer and we're gonna continue on with the green layer which is gonna be made from leeks celery and also um, courgette so I'm, I've preheated the um, pan now and I'm gonna add celery and leek here so this is two sticks of celery and one small um, leek and it's always a good idea to make more of of this because um, you're going through um, all the effort of chopping the vegetables frying them separately then layering um, you know might as well make more and make actually two lasagnas so we're going to be dry frying this for about maybe three to four minutes before adding the courgette so it's been about um, 
three, four minutes as the leeks and celery have dry fried. I'm gonna be adding the courgette. So this is one quite a big size courgette um, that I've um, halved it and very thinly mandolined. So we're gonna need about uh, five more minutes um, for the courgette to soften. To help with softening, at this point you can now sprinkle a bit of salt um, or I'll be adding a little bit of stock powder towards the end. Um, if you sprinkle salt now it will help you know, the courgette to um, soften quicker and release more of the juices. Uh, but since I'm not, I'm not adding salt, I'm just gonna dry fry it for a few more minutes. So my courgette has softened now. I'm gonna add um, maybe half a teaspoon, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of the bouillon powder just to give it a little bit of extra um, saltiness and flavor. Just mix it up. I'm gonna fry it for a couple more minutes and that will be ready. So the vegetables are ready now. I'm gonna transfer them into um, a bowl. Now we're on to the third layer, which will be um, onion and carrot. So um, I've preheated my um, saute pan already. And I'm gonna put a pinch of salt onto my onions to encourage them to sweat their water so we don't need to add any additional liquid. Um, it's a little trick that you can do and that kind of um, draws the moisture out of the onions quicker. So I'm gonna fry, dry fry onions for about two, three minutes and then we're gonna be adding our carrots. And as you can see, the onions are starting to brown. Um, they're not sticking to the pan too much, but if they do, we could always add a tablespoon or two of um, our stock, just vegetable stock, deglaze the pan a little bit and then continue frying. I think we're ready now to add the carrots. Um, the onions have been frying for about two, three minutes, so I'm gonna add um, the carrots and we're gonna fry for probably about another five minutes or so. So this, this is, so that was one large onion um, diced and this is three large um, carrots grated. I'll, I'll also, you know, put all the quantities and measurements in the description below as well for you. So yeah, so we want to fry this with carrots now for um, probably another five minutes the onion and carrot mixture has been frying for about seven, eight minutes altogether now. It's starting to stick, it's starting to stick to the bottom slightly, so I'm gonna just add a couple of tablespoons of um, vegetable stock here. And now I'm gonna be adding a little bit of tomato paste or you could also use ketchup if you're not uh, worried about whole food um, dish. Uh, but obviously tomato paste is a whole food ingredient. So probably about two tablespoons of tomato paste you want. And then we'll also add one tablespoon of miso paste as well here because we're not gonna be adding any um, salt into this layer. Um, so that miso will just give that saltiness. And I'm gonna add a little bit of um, stock here just to uh, dilute this slightly so that it mixes in better. So mix it well and then let it uh, cook for maybe another couple of minutes. So this is now ready. I'm gonna transfer it into a bowl and then we're gonna uh, prepare our white cheese sauce to go on top. Let's prepare the white cheesy sauce to go on top. So I've got um, 
a steamed cauliflower. I've actually overcooked it a little bit in my instant pot. I put it on 10 minutes, um, but it only probably needs like three to five minutes, I think, for cauliflower uh, because it's, you know, the instant pot is so powerful um, and it obviously takes a little bit of time to heat up and cool down so it cooks even further. So I think probably about three minutes in an instant pot, your cauliflower should be done. Um, and then I've got 200 grams of firm tofu. If you're allergic to soy, um, you can omit this, um, of course, and just make it with the cauliflower um, and maybe add maybe a couple of tablespoons of nut butter, like cashew or almond, to just give that little bit of um, um, fattiness. But this tofu obviously um, naturally has some fat in it. Um, and I like the texture it gives as well. So we're using, this is 200 grams of firm tofu here. So I'm adding that here. You can break it up a little as well to make it um, easier to blend. And then I've got um, three cloves of garlic that I've crushed that I'm adding in here. Um, three to four tablespoons of nutritional yeast to give it like the cheesiness. So probably gonna go four tablespoons here. And then um, you can also add a little bit of salt or you could add um, some of the uh, bouillon powder. So I think I'm gonna go with um, half a teaspoon of this um, vegan stock powder. So this is um, a marigold uh, vegan organic um, stock powder. So half a teaspoon of that, or like I say, add a bit of salt and pepper if you like. Um, and then um, a tablespoon of um, white wine vinegar, or you could also use apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to just add a tablespoon of white wine vinegar here, just to give that tanginess, the cheesy um, flavor. And then I'm going to just blend this um, with my um, stick blender, or you could also do this in your normal blender or food processor. And the last ingredient, I've got some soy milk here on hand, or you could use any other plant milks if you um, can't have soy. So this is homemade soy milk. I can link um, how I make my own ho um, homemade soy milk. But um, I'm gonna add maybe a third of a cup just to start with to, to make it a little bit looser and more pourable sauce. A little bit more. So I actually um, used about three quarters of a cup of um, soy milk so far. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add it all. So it'll be a cup of um, soy milk if you're using both the cauliflower and also 200 grams of firm tofu. So this is it. It's um, quite thick but it's um, quite pourable texture. So let me give this a go. Mm, it's good, it's good, but it definitely needs some um, salt. Um, I'll add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt to this. Yeah, it definitely needs a bit of salt here. Let me give this a go again. Hmm, nice, quite garlicky. It's got quite a garlic punch. Once it's cooked, it's cooked, it'll not be as pungent. Um, I think I need um, another, it feels like it's not quite cheesy tasting because I think it needs a little bit more sourness. So I'll add another tablespoon of white white vinegar here. So just go obviously with your taste, add a little bit more and adjust and taste again. That's why I love cooking so much, that it's not an exact science. You don't need to weigh it by the gram. You can kind of improvise, add more, you know, different ingredients, try it with this, try it with a bit of something else, you know, and you don't have to be exact. 
Right, so this is ready now. So now all we need to do is to put this together and start baking. Now for the fun part, I love putting this together. So we'll start with our uh, mince layer, mince um, tomato layer. So I'm gonna put a little bit down there just to coat the bottom. So this is um, a glass um, container that I'm using oven proof or you could use um, you know, ceramic as well, that will work. So I've got my mince here at the bottom and I'm gonna use a few lasagna sheets here. So I'm gonna inter interlace them together. I'm gonna add three per per layer just to give enough of pasta. Love finding pasta in between the layers. Um, really yummy. And I'm gonna go for this green um, layer um, next uh, just to give a contrast. So we'll put green and then obviously orange on top. So I'm gonna add this on. I'll leave a little bit on here um, to put into the next because I've got a smaller container here as well that I'm going to make a smaller a lasagna because it's going to be a bit too much for one um, lasagna here and that's why I said I like making a bit more of, of all the veggies and everything um, so that so that I could make more than one uh, lasagna that it will last longer because this is so tasty um, it'll disappear in no time. So the uh, vegetable layer is on and again we're going to layer the whole wheat uh, lasagna sheets on top. I'll do the carrot, one, two, three, and then finish off with this and, you know, um, also our white sauce. That'll make more sense. So the orange goes a third layer. So this is quite... Um, a thick lasagna here. We don't want it to make it too thick because we still need to fit two layers on here. So I'm gonna just distribute this evenly. Looking good. Another um, few sheets. Of pasta here. Then I'm gonna add another mince layer here. Again, followed by three pasta sheets. There we go. And then to top it off, we're gonna pour um, most of this white sauce on. Well, not quite, you know, all of it uh, because as you can see, it's starting to reach the top. I'm gonna get a um, clean spatula as well to distribute this. So yeah, so we're gonna put a good layer and I'm preheating my oven on 180 degrees um, Celsius fan oven. Right, so that is ready to go into my oven for about 40 minutes, um, 30 to 40 minutes. I like to do it about 40 minutes to make sure the pasta is cooked through fully. Um, so yeah, so about 40 minutes and we'll check it then. Lasagna is done. So look at this beauty, it looks so yummy. The top has cracked quite a bit, so perhaps you could get away with adding a little bit more liquid to the sauce so it's, it's a bit more pourable. It might not crack just as much and it you know, will have that extra bit of you know, um, wetness, the liquid it needs to make sure that the pasta stays moist underneath. Um, but yeah, so I've cut myself this piece here. Um, it's lovely to actually see the layers, different colors as well. Um, yeah, so let me give this a go. I actually didn't put any pepper on my mince layer because normally I would, but I forgot. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of pepper on my piece here and we'll see whether we'll need any more salt or not. So let me give this 
ago. It smelled really delicious. The garlic, um, the kitchen was really smelling lovely and garlicky before. Obviously be careful because it, uh, it's really hot straight from the oven. Mmm. Oh my goodness. This is good. Actually, you might want to add a little bit more stock into your vegetables because as you could, you know, you could see the vegetable layers were not very moist. Um, so I think I would add a little bit more stock when cooking so that vegetables are moister because actually the pasta in between, it's cooked, but it's actually a little bit um, kind of al dente. Mm. I could, you know, feel it um, quite a bit when chewing. Last time I made this, the, the pasta was really soft. I think it just didn't have enough of moisture. So make sure you add a little bit more of stock. But the flavor is really good. Last time when I made this, instead of cauliflower, because the cheese has a little bit of bitterness still because my cauliflower was not the, the freshest. So cauliflower, once it stands a little bit in the fridge, it tends to have this kind of bitterness. Um, so I think maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon even of maple syrup in the cheese sauce would have helped to um, counteract that bitterness. Or last time what I did, I made actually the sauce with sweet potato and sweet potato was really nice and um, sweet. Of course, I added all the other ingredients like the apple cider vinegar or uh, white wine vinegar, a bit of um, nutritional yeast and um, some salt. Um, and I actually preferred that uh, topping than this um, kind of garlic white sauce with uh, tofu and um, cauliflower. So it's up to you, maybe experiment. This obviously looks more like your traditional um, you know, lasagna, but experiment and try which one you prefer. Um, yeah, and I think it needs just a tad bit of salt as well, in my opinion, but it's easy to add salt. It's harder to take it out. So it's always better to make it with less salt. And then, you know, you can add it on your plate and that way you actually consume less salt. Mm. This is really good. So yeah, this is a success. I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and subscribe for more videos and weight loss tips on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And remember guys, food is fuel. So be mindful of what you put in the body. Until next time.